Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Formotion. So as you see today, we will create a fully 3D scene within After Effects and I'm going to show you some advanced 3D and compositing tricks. And hey, did you know that I answered all my questions in the comments? Really, try it out. Okay, why don't we just directly start? So this tutorial is split in the 3D work and the fun part, the advanced compositing. So feel free to use the chapters to jump to the different sections. For 3D to work in our favor, we need three effects. A camera to capture the scene, some light so we can see it, and obviously some 3D assets. So I also showed you where you can find some more and how to create your own assets from pictures in my last tutorial, so make sure to check that out as well. But let's grab a car today from Sketchlab. So simply create a free account and you are good to go. And I either download the OBJ file or the GRB as both of them work pretty well in After Effects. So just import them as you would import any other file format into After Effects. Or simply drag and drop it in. Okay, so what is going on? Just 20 seconds ago, I said we need lights to see it and also a camera. Hm. True. But After Effects is clever enough to give us the default settings for both of that. You can use the camera by hitting C for orbiting, hit C once again for panning, and a last time for dollying. And attention, first tip here. When you click on those three icons over here, you can choose some specific settings for each of them. For example, the dolly is super cool when you dolly towards the cursor and not just into the middle of the scene. Oh. And directly the next tip. Let's say I have this cool perspective and now I create a new camera. Oops, it jumps to the default cam setting. Hmm. So let's undo that and simply go to layer, camera, create camera from 3D view and voila, the camera matches our view. Okay, last but not least, we need a light, but I would skip this for now as this defines our final look. And before we work on that, I would set up the whole scene. So I also found this concrete and place it into my comp. Hey, and you can really add as much as you want to the scene to make it look cool. So I always love to have some parallax, so something in the close foreground and background, making the scene come to life. Some trees and whatever we can find here and all of the 3D elements also interact with each other. So you can also create some objects on your own. For example, let's create a fence. For that, we need two shape layers. First one, let's just create a circle with the mask tool, make it 3D and extrude it within the geometry options. And we can now copy that layer a few times and offset it. Next, let's create a rectangle. Also extrude it a little bit and voila, we have a 3D fence for our foreground. Hey, maybe even a second car that is passing by. Whatever you want. So let's quickly bring in this green screen footage of me pretending to drive. Key it with the key light effect and make it 3D. And yeah, you guessed it, we can now place myself into the car. And as I already knew that I want this kind of three-fourth perspective, I also filmed it like that. Now, we can finally jump to the fun part, adding our animation. So let's quickly zoom out with the camera so we see everything and animate the car driving forward. And I'm doing that with a null object so I can also attach additional stuff to it. So create a new null and make it 3D. Now, parallel the car and myself to it, and with just two keyframes, our car is moving. One setting, we can use the camera tool and find a nice framing for our camera and the car. And when we are happy, let's set keyframes for the camera properties. And we can go to the last frame and do the exact same thing here. Again, a quick tip. For faster preview, you can use the draft button. And if you click on this frame button here, you see what's happening outside the frame, which helps a lot in finding the perfect camera position. Now, let's play this back and see what we have so far. They're looking cool. 
Okay, let's be honest. Looks like shit. Almost like in an 80s video game. Hey, and this is because we are still missing something. Well, two things. The light and compositing. So, let there be light. So, let's create a new environment light. And just with this as default, it starts to look way better. But let's improve. Let's improve a lot. Let us use an HDR image as our light source. So a 360 degree image of a landscape or whatever you want to project light onto our scene. And I have this night scene here. Some light still coming from the sky and a moon as our main light source. Looks dramatic. So exactly what we want. Hey, if you don't see anything, you're probably still in draft mode. So let's just bring this onto our comp and we can now select it in the light as our source. And yes, this does the trick. Just super cool. Hey, and we can still add additional lights, for example, a street lamp. And hey, let's also use this HDR image as our background. Okay, we've finished with our 3D work for now. Let's just add this to our render queue and render it as a ProRes 4444 file to have most information in it. And now we can finally come to the fun part, the advanced composite. There are a few things we can do here directly to improve. Depth of field and motion blur. So for that we can just use the pixel motion blur and apply it to the footage. And we can bring up the samples, which will slow down the render, but will look way better. So for our depth of field, we create a new adjustment layer with the camera lens blur effect on it. Okay, now we have but blur all over the place. So let's directly create a layer that we can black and white to define where there should be more or less blur. And for that we use the gradient ramp effect. I want my blur in that part, so let's set our color points accordingly. Once happy, we choose that layer in the camera lens blur layer and voila, also this is done. Now let's work on the light or car. I need a separate layer for them. I could do that in 3D, but let's just create a white solid, make it 3D and place it where our lights are. And with only two masks, we have a layer that represents the bright highlights of our car. Oh, and don't forget to also pair this to the null object and also render this. So for the lights, simply add them on top, blending mode to add or screen. And now let's have fun with this. First layer, we just blur horizontally with a directional blur to mimic some light streaks. Hey, and if they are too prominent, you can use the minimax effect to just treat them on one axis. Great. Next, let's use a radial fast blur set to brightest. Set the center to the back of the car and play with the amount for some volumetric lights magic. Hey, and we are getting somewhere, but now the lights are on top of everything. So we need a way to isolate back and foreground. Hey, and we can do that again in our 3D comp. Just add maybe a green screen layer to wherever you want to have it in the depth. So for a solid green color and no additional fall off, you can use an ambient light that just brightens everything up in the exact same way. So now we can also render that and key out the green, which leaves us with just a foreground. In this layer, we can again use as a mat for our video that we just rendered. So now the foreground is in the foreground again. And this is great because now we can spice it up with some additional footage. So those I have from Action VFX, you should definitely check out their collections and new subscription plan because, well, they simply have the best footage out there in any professional format. And, and I'm doing an in-depth compositing tutorial with Action VFX footage soon. So there will also be a huge giveaway and, and really huge. So maybe you should think about subscribing so you do not miss that. Okay. For now, I'm using some fog elements that I can place in the distance as well as this really, really cool vehicle dust trickles. Hey, and if you have watched it until New Year, let me know by writing in the comments, wheels are not moving. And this is also where I leave you today. 
and wish you a lot of fun with a new world inside of After Effects.